morning. It's Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Consider the Rock, and our scripture is Isaiah chapter 51. The prophet writes, Listen to me, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord. Consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were mined. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Remembering from whence we came is at once the greatest blessing and bane humans enjoy and endure. When we recall our sinfulness, willful and self-destructive, we must endure its shame. When we recall our humble entrance into this world, small and totally dependent on the kindness of our parents, we gain the perspective of dust. Lowly we began, and we are bound for it again. God points out to the enslaved nation of Israel, losers in war and captives again, that both their sin and their Savior are attached together. The God who used Israel's enemy to awaken them to their sinful ways would also be their Savior, bringing greatness out of brokenness once again. This is a thought that occupies my mind and soul these days. And not just for America, we're only a few days away from the July 4th anniversary of our nation's birthday, but this is not patriotic nationalism. This is about humanity's survival. God's promises are at least two things. First, they're certain. What God promises, God brings to pass. And secondly, they're also misunderstood and misrepresented. Just turn on the TV and see the commercials during religious programming. Well, Isaiah says God promises joy that will replace the ruins of a disgraced superpower. In so doing, the prophet invites the beleaguered nation to consider the rock from which they were cut. He holds up their humble beginnings for examination. It was to an old couple's childless vacuum God promised an heir, the firstborn of a nation to be numbered as the grains of sand on the beaches. To Sarah, 90 years old, and her 100-year-old husband Abraham, there was given a birth and the beginning of fulfillment. What was once the emptiness of no evidence of God's promised blessing is now breathing and cooing and nursing and filling diapers in a geriatric couple's tent. (laughs) Amazement, laughter, and joy have replaced sad resignation. Singing and dancing are the new order of the day. Humble beginnings in Abraham's tent now shows the flower of spring in the Garden of Hope. But it also began a rough ride. Abraham's family has known what every other family on earth has experienced. Treachery, jealousy, hypocrisy, poverty, oppression, tears, joy, singing, parched times, and good. And eventually, the fruit of God's promise came to a cradle in Bethlehem, born a child with no earthly father, but nonetheless a part of Abraham's lineage. This is the centerpiece of God's creation, understood from before the foundation of the universe, that the promise of restoration is carved from the bedrock of Yahweh's strength. And here we are, muddled in such deep and abstruse mysteries such as whether or not to wear a face mask in Walmart. (laughs) We have deep pain over the shortage of toilet paper, and on and on ad nauseum. We're drowning in the proverbial puddle of plague concern at the moment, with all sense of normalcy on hold except for the incessant droning of the news channels counting the dead. All this and it is substantial, is momentary. God is forever, and we've been mined from his quarry, not some primordial pond of protozoa. 
We're made in his image, and blurred and muddied as that image is in 2020, we remain the apple of his eye, the crown of his creation. And as much as we might feel as depressed and forgotten as Abraham and Sarah, the promises of God never fail. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful that the promise of your word will never return to you unaccomplished. What you set out to do is already done. Prime our faith, Lord, to receive this truth today. We pray in the name of your holy child, Jesus. For you today, if the virus culture of this moment has you a little or a lot depressed or bewildered, don't let the mud puddle claim another victim. Just lift your head to look at the rock from which you were cut. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.